welcome to the Libra Lit review of the Raspberry Pi 4B. On the left hand side here we have a 3B Plus, the outgoing device. On the right hand side we've got the new 4B. On the left the Raspberry Pi has a single full size HDMI connector, micro USB power, you've got gigabit but attached to an internal USB bus Ethernet and then two sets of USB 2.0 USB ports. On the Raspberry Pi 4B, first we have a USB-C power cable uh, that's providing 5 volt 3 amp to the board. You have two micro HDMI connectors which uh, support video output. Librelec is only going to be supporting one of those at the current time because Kodi only supports one of those outputting when running uh, on the video stack that we run. On Raspbian you can run both screens at the same time. Turning the board round, you've got two sets of USB ports, two USB 2.0 and two USB 3.0, which is gonna give a nice boost for people streaming media off a hard disk. On the right, you then have proper gigabit ethernet that is no longer attached to the internal USB bus, so it's gonna be a lot faster in the testing we've been doing. Media streaming off a NAS box in the network, you know, opens and starts playback with a lot more snap than it did previously. It's really nice to see. The board itself is shipping in three RAM, different RAM configurations. One, one GB, which is maintaining the existing $35 original price point for the Raspberry Pi, and then a 2 gig and 4 gig version which are $45 and $55 respectively. Otherwise the board is pretty much the same as it was. The exception being of course everything's now a lot faster. The new Broadcom VCM 2711 chip is using uh, four A72 cores whereas the previous board is using four A53 cores. Although it's only a modest 0.1 gigahertz bump in clock speed, it's actually a much larger bump in overall uh, processing and media capabilities. The new board also has uh, native support for HEPC, uh, so no longer CPU decoding that, which is brilliant for code use. Anyway, let's move on to the next part of the review. We're going to add an SD card, which is uh, installed with LibreLex uh, new uh, 9.2 beta 1, oh sorry, alpha 1 release. We haven't got as far as beta yet. That can go into the micro SD card slot. Raspberry Pi is still using a micro SD card. Some of the people out there might sniff and say, well, it's not got EMC on it, but micro SD cards are perfectly fast enough for Kodi use. We run, Librelet runs everything in memory anyway, and uh, performance is still very good. I'm going to add a, a Flirt USB device because I want to be able to control it. Now, let's move off to the TV. Review. Raspberry Pi is now booting up. This is the new LibreLet 9.2 Alpha 1 release. There's a small SPI boot flash on the Raspberry Pi 4, which will make future bootloader updates easier. Now we're in the Kodi home screen, let's go review some system information quickly. First thing you'll notice is that there's three and a half gig of RAM free. That's because this is a four gig board. In our testing, we've also been looking at uh, two gig and one gig configurations as well to make sure they run okay. For storage, I'm just using a very basic kind of thing you buy in the supermarket SD card, nothing fancy. The video driver is the new VideoCore 3D driver. Because it's new, there are some glitches here and there. There's a little bit of screen tearing in some of the screen navigation, some of the Kodi sort of transitions and file browsing views. Nothing major, nothing that's gonna ruin your experience. And uh, the Raspberry Pi Foundation developers have been pushing updates at a phenomenal rate over the last couple of months as the board's been developed. And uh, things are a lot more stable now. And I think the remaining glitches will be resolved fairly quickly. On the hardware you can see that the number of BOGO MIPS is way up on what it used to be. The uh, hardware is still reported as BCM2835 
uh, not the BCM2711 chip that's actually on the board. That's done for software compatibility reasons. It's the same in the previous Raspberry Pi 3 as well. Let's briefly look at some system settings. As you can see in the whitelist, there's all of the 4K resolutions listed in addition to 1080p. I've got the resolution on this particular board set to 1080p. It's not really necessary to run the entire Kodi UI at 4K and uh, it tends to make the UI a little bit faster and a little bit more responsive. And that's not just true about the Raspberry Pi, that's also true of AimLogic, Rockchip, other devices that we run. Let's go and have a look at some media playing. Got some test files in a folder. I could show you 1080p, but you all want to see 4K. So this is a trailer of the movie Interstellar. It's running in 4K, it's HEVC. As you can see, it started almost instantaneously. I've just got a normal gigabit network here, nothing fancy. The greater throughput on the gigabit NIC is very beneficial for much faster playback start. There you go, player process information, HEVC, 4K, on a Raspberry Pi, fantastic. If I bring up the debug view, you'll see that there are zero frames skipped. It's not a particularly high bitrate trailer. It's not formatted for the web, but good to see. The performance on other 4K videos is not always quite as good. There are still some work in progress things to do with 4K. It's also worth noting that HDR and hybrid log gamma are not yet supported those are going to take a little bit of time because they're dependent on kernel frameworks that uh, come in newer kernels. So uh, we will have to wait a little while for that to come. It's more likely to be something that comes in Kodi V19, not Kodi 18. Anyway. That concludes a quick demo of the Raspberry Pi 4B. Thank you.